Good morning, church. Are we ready to worship? Now, do we have any musicians in here besides Pastor Jordan? Anybody who loves to play music, been on a worship team before? You know how sometimes you go through practice and you're like, man, I wish that it would have been like in practice. Well, we're going to try that right now because we didn't get a chance to practice. We all, we all in on this? So we're going to have some fun this morning. Can we all lift up our hands and welcome the Holy Spirit? God, we just say that you are welcome. We don't care if there's lights or power or there isn't. Well, we do care. We'd prefer to have it. But we will worship you regardless, Jesus, because you are worthy of our praise, God. We ask for the anointing of your spirit over this entire service that your name, the name of Jesus, gets glorified because you're the king and you're who you say you are. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. You are worthy of all praise, the King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, amen.
prophesy. You ever think of when the power goes on and off and on and off and on and off? It's like this shaking. And as, a, as the Christians, a lot of times we say, what's the enemy doing? But I want to check. Let's change our mindset to what is God doing this morning? Oh, we prophesy there's a shaking in this nation. Oh, I prophesy this morning that there is a shaking in this nation. A shaking, a shaking. Oh, revival's coming. Revival's coming to this land. Let's prophesy this over this nation. Ready? Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Come on. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. church is. I, I saw the I saw the ropes tying Gulliver down. I saw the ropes breaking. I just saw the ropes breaking and I saw I saw the head coming up from northeast Ohio just like he prophesied about. So here's what I want to pray. Can we just pray into that? So just close your eyes. Father, I thank you that today, Lord, I, I have some sticky notes under my computer at my desk where I, I said today I saw revival start. The, the size of a man's fist. I remember September 24th last year. Lord, I remember different times, even two Sundays ago, when it seemed like your presence could not get any richer. But God, I sense today, it's just he was saying, get up, and we're going to sing that again. That we're going to speak, we're going to prophesy to the revival man that was prophesied about by Bob Jones. God, that a revival would sweep across this nation in hundreds of thousands. Everybody say this with me, hundreds of thousands. Come on, think bigger. Say hundreds of thousands would come to know Jesus. Say it with me. Come to know Jesus. Set free from sin. Set free from addiction. Come on, say it like it's your family. Set free from addiction. Set free from sin. And that it would begin in Northeast Ohio. I said Northeast Ohio. 
So uh, he's going to say this, uh, get up again, get up out of that grave. And as we sing it, I want you to picture Gulliver's tied down, right? And in my spirit, those ropes are the, are the religious spirit that says, this is how you have to do things. This is how, and you can't, and you can't. And gifts have ceased and stop and this and stop and that, and you can't. That's, that's religion. But how many believe that faith says no? All things are possible in the name of Jesus. And we're going to say, get up, get out of that grave. And we're going to prophesy. Amen? Let's so do that part again. If you can breathe. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of Ohio. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. King, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Prepare the way for the coming King. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Prepare the way for the coming King. Oh, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Prepare the way for the coming King. Oh, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Come on, church. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Prophesy this over the church now. Because the church has to be a light, right? And that's what Donna was just prophesying about is us being a light. 
So let's prophesy over ourselves and over the church. Get up, get up, get up, and get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, and get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. prophesy right now. I know we've had a lot of prophecy already this morning. If you grew up in church singing this song and this song means something to you, would you just raise your hand right now? There's a new season coming. There's a shift coming. And you might hear songs like this a little bit less and less, even more. I know that hurts a little bit in your spirit, but you are needed. If you raise your hand in this song, is that generation, there's, there's a certain protection. There's a certain protection that's needed from you guys. And there's an intercession. And the revival that's coming that you've been praying for is gonna look a little different than you've always thought it was gonna look, and yet it is coming. It is coming. So I speak blessing over you today. I speak favor over you today in the name of Jesus.
search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty prayers and treasures that fail are never
remember one uh, one day I came into staff and me and Pastor Jordan wrote this this song and hopefully it's okay if we do this, Pastor Jordan. But I just want right here in the front row. I just God has such amazing things. And he has these crazy desires in your heart and these crazy dreams and you have tons and tons of ideas. And God, we just ask that you would bring order to those ideas, that she would know exactly what to do next. Every step of the way that it would be ordered like, like colors and, and steps, like this, this step is this color, the next step is this color, the next step is this color. So she would know exactly what to do, God, that her mind would be totally at peace knowing I'm gonna go for this idea right now. Thank you, Jesus. So I also feel like there's either somebody that's already come into your life to walk alongside you, to help you with organizing, or they're coming. And I feel like the Lord's saying that you've maybe kind of dismissed it a little bit. And he's saying, I put you there for them to come alongside you. So you're not going to have to do it alone. You have somebody that's like wanting to go arm in arm with you and help you organize your thoughts and your dreams and pray through it with you and help you walk with so this is a song that we wrote in a time of for me kind of chaos needing to find a place of rest and my pastor said you know what we're gonna write a song together and he had other things he could have been doing and we had an agenda And just like Pastor Jordan knew, and God used him to know what I needed that day, Jesus knows literally everything that's going on, every battle inside you, every insecurity, every fear. He knows about the overwhelming struggle you have about what happens in our nation and the deep, hard decisions you have to make. But can you do what I did on that day and what my pastor asked me to do? Just surrender. In the middle of the battle, and find a place of peace in the presence of Jesus. Here in this place, I find my rest. Safe in your arms I find peace at last Here in your love I lay my life down To worship my King I join heaven sound
shouts with angels sing holy
Jesus, we love you in this place. We know that there is no one like you, Jesus. You know, I, I want to pray. I have to be careful because I could get teary-eyed, but I, I, I want to pray over you what the Lord did in me here a couple months ago where I, I woke up. These things look so ridiculous. I'm sorry, they're distracting me. I'm going to put them back up if the power goes out. But um, um, a couple months ago, I woke up. It was like 6 in the morning with this bridge. And I heard the Lord just saying, I'm returning your song. I'm returning your song. Because I hadn't, I hadn't written a song in like months, six months, 12. I mean, it was just like difficult times. And uh, the Lord said, I'm returning your song. And it was just this, angels resound with the sound of your praise. And God's saying, I'm returning your song, Rock of Grace. Come on, can we sing the bridge one more time? Sorry, I just, hey, this is a house of worship, right? All right, let's do the bridge. And let's just lift it up, guys. I mean, even if you just ask the Holy Spirit, in fact, maybe even in your mind's eye, just say, God, put me right there before the throne, what it's going to be like when I'm surrounded by that sea of glass. The prophet said there's a circle of fire above his head, that there's creatures around the throne, bowing down, singing holy. Let's sing this. Heaven resounds, angels sing, holy, holy, holy. We join them now and we sing your praises. Spirit for reminding us today what heaven's going to be like, that eternal song of worship, that praise unto the Lamb. Thank you, God, for making our hearts a little more ready for it this morning, for reminding us of what really matters, that we live for your name and your glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone that would agree with that, say amen. 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 Before you're seated, why don't you high five or elbow bump somebody? and uh, on your way to your seat. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Rock of Grace. We're really glad that you guys are here. As some of you know, it's been a crazy morning. We've had power on, power off. Power on, power off. I don't know if you're in Kinsman area or whatever, but uh, it's been fun this morning. But anyway, if you are new new with us this morning, we would love the opportunity just to be able to get to know you. And a very simple way to do that is there's this little card in the seat back in front of you. If you would just take just a moment and fill it out, you can drop it in one of the boxes when you exit this morning, or you can get on your smartphone. You can text new at ROG and that's 9400. That's another great way to connect with us. Um, I'm just going to fill you in on a couple things that are coming up um, today. If you are involved with the launch at the Warren campus, they're going to be having a meeting right after church. So um, if you are involved or you think you might want to be involved, this is a great opportunity to stay after, connect with the people, and hear more about the vision and what are the next steps in launching the Warren campus. Um, also, this week or tonight is Immerse. 
Um, many of you know what Immerse is, but if you don't, um, just like our praise and worship this morning, um, we meet with many other churches across the area. Um, it is going to be at Horizons Church in Middlefield. It is awesome, uh, an awesome time, powerful time, so great time to bring friends and family and, and worship. Uh, so that will be this evening. Uh, last, there is an outreach, Light the Night. It's coming up. You can sign up online. You can go uh, to the website. They would love for you to uh, sign up there because then they know how many volunteers that they have. But it's just a great way to connect with the community um, during uh, Halloween time. They're going to be having outreaches in various neighborhoods throughout the community. So sign up online and... That is it. We have one special announcement, though. You have to wait one second. Uh, Paul? Uh, good morning, Rock of Grace. Uh, my name is Paul Hetherington, if you don't know me. I just had a real special announcement. I want you to mark your calendars for the end of this month, uh, Sunday, October 31st, is going to be Pastor Appreciation Day. Now, all the pastors in here, all the announce, all the uh, staff, just don't listen to this announcement. This is not for you. Just close your ears. We're going to talk about you right now, okay? I'm not going to talk to you. So, Noel, uh, one of our deacons, she wrote a nice letter. You should have gotten it this week. Um, if you didn't, you should be getting it. I believe they're going to have some out in the foyer in baskets. Please take one of these. It tells you everything you need to know about Pastor Appreciation Day, that special day. You know, my dad pastored here in the 80s. I know that was forever ago. I know we did pastor appreciations. They were so special. You know, they're not going to come up here, the pastors, and say, hey, you know, make sure you come to this day. Make sure you give to me. You know, they're not going to toot their own horn. I mean, Jordan might, but... Uh, <laughs> Now, now listen, Jordan picks on me a lot from the pulpit, does he not? I mean, that fire tunnel, he made sure he picked on me. So, you know, when you give the mic to someone else, then it's fair game. So, no, but seriously, you know, Dr. Harnett always taught us at work, we don't have to go to work, we get to go to work. We don't have to do Pastor Appreciation Day, we get to do Pastor Appreciation Day. Amen? You know, this morning, if you saw, you know, Pastor Jordan was praying and he had an armor bearer behind him. And it just gave me a, a quick little insight when I was singing. I thought, that's what this is about. We have an armor bearer to be to Jordan and to the rest of the pastors. We can do it through pastor appreciation with giving. There's so many things we can do. Most importantly, we can pray. We can give. They're going to have baskets out there that you can give to. Uh, you can do texting. You can do calls. You can do letters. Uh, if you are going to give, they do request that you just put PAD on the envelope so they know it's Pastor Appreciation Day. You can write how you want to allocate your funds. But just mainly just be here for that day. It's going to be special. We're going to pray for them. We're going to speak into their lives. We're just going to enjoy their day. So everyone just say October 31st. Be here. Amen. I'm going to get you back for that. You're going to, you're going to come up like three times in the sermon. Every time someone sins in the Bible, I'm just going to say, there was a man named Paul. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Kind of. Um, I want to welcome up our missionary. As you guys know, we are big on missions here. We firmly believe in Matthew 28, go to all the world. And preach the gospel, right? Um, I don't know if you guys realize this. It's well, you usually find this kind of stuff out at the annual um, business meeting, what we called Family Day or something like that, this last year, and where we uh, let everybody know about all the dollar amounts and the number of missionaries where you guys at this church in Kinsman, this little town of Kinsman, 1,900 people in Kinsman, yet this church touches thousands of people around the world with the gospel. I always think that is amazing. Well, one of those missionaries, yeah, give yourselves a hand. That's awesome. Or your neighbor or your mom, your friend. Um, we want to welcome up Gary Higgins. We've been a longtime supporter of his ministry, Water Saves. And I'm going to let you tell, or let him tell you more about it. Can you welcome him up? Give him a big hand. Good morning. You folks are crazy. <laughs> crazy for Jesus. Amen. Anyway, it's great to be here. Thanks, Pastor, for letting me come and just share a few moments on what God is doing in our ministry that is uh, literally worldwide. And, and you folks have been supporting us for quite a long time, I believe, close to 20 years now. 
And without churches like you, we could not have been doing the ministry that God has called us to do. You have helped us to partner with other missionaries around this planet, and we have helped to build and uh, build over 50 new churches. Isn't that awesome? But here, get this. This is cool. And I'm assuming that's okay to say that here, cool. You have, with your help, prayer and financial support, we have seen over 50 thousand people come to Christ. Isn't that incredible? God is awesome. God is awesome. Without your help, we could not have been able to bless people like the Children's Orphanage in Tanzania, Africa. This orphanage of over 200 children is a unique orphanage where most of the children there are albinos. And when I was sitting down with my missionary friend and we were strategizing on how we could help, he begins to show me pictures of these children. And I noticed that some of them are missing fingers and a couple of them are missing hands and knowing, you know, that that is not a typical symptom of albinoism. I said, Tim, I said, what's the deal here? What's happening? He said, well, in this part of Africa, children that are albinos or people that are albinos, uh, the, the witch doctors will pay their families money for the privilege of cutting off the appendages of these people and children and using them in their witchcraft. Most of these children will die by the age of 24 because they get skin cancer. And they have eight wells on their property, but they can't drink the water because it's contaminated. And they have to wash their bodies with this contaminated water. And these children have to walk two miles daily just to fetch and bring back drink, drink, drinking water to the, uh, uh, to the community and to their orphanage. Well, we went there and we installed these water filtration systems at every single well and at their outdoor kitchen. And now these children no longer have to walk two miles to get fresh drinking water. These children, no longer, these precious souls no longer have to wash their bodies with bacteria-laden water. That's what you have helped us to do. You have helped us to reach out to family after family after family. In fact, recently I was in Peru and there was a family there I met. She has three young children and her mother that she's responsible for. They have a faucet in their home that is, uh, comes from the city, but yet that water is contaminated. They can't drink it. And, uh, but she, this young mother spends a dollar 40 cents a week in buying water for her family. That amounts to eight ounces of water a day per person. Now, how many of you here can live on eight ounces of water a day? That's not even enough for your coffee, is it? But now this young mother has an unlimited supply with this filter that we use. This little filter, I've got one sitting out on my table, uh, will filter water from any fresh water source. It doesn't matter whether it's rainwater, water out of a well, water out of a river. And this little filter uh, will not only filter fresh water, but it, it's capable of producing over 400 gallons of water a day. That little filter out there has no moving parts, requires no electricity or other power source. And as long as they take care of it in the way that we tell them to take care of, that little filter is going to last for decades. Isn't that incredible? And what an easy ministry it is to share with them physical water and then just to segue into sharing with them the living water. And it is just so incredible how God is using our ministry to bless uh, communities and people around the world. And we want to thank you for your prayer support, for your financial giving. One of the ways you can help us financially is these little filters to cost us about $40 to provide for a family. So if you'd like to participate in that, stop by my table today. I can set that up. We can take debit and credit cards and so forth. But uh, anyway, I want to say thank you, Pastor Jordan, for your many years of faithful support. We just have a short video we want you to watch this morning. God bless you, and thank you for allowing us to be here.
How cool is that? Yeah, we, we've been longtime partner because it's so obvious. That, I mean, the, the gospel comes through their ministry, and we, we try to take care as Christians of the real needs of people. Amen? Uh, one of the things we like to do, Gary, is pray over our missionaries, but you already escaped the stage. So can you just stand up real quick? Can Grok of Grace, all you crazy people, as he lovingly defined you, stretch your hands towards Gary? God, we just bless Gary. God, we thank you for the innovation that came his way. God, for um, that, that um, yeah, that innovation, God, that invention that allowed so many people to receive and allows so many people to receive clean water. God, and that opens up a doorway to hear the gospel. We bless him. We pray for more and more salvations, more and more salvations. And we pray that every dollar would come into this ministry that he is praying for in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Yeah, again, you can, you can give online. Um, you know, you can go out and buy and say, you know, I'm just want to, I want to donate $40 and make it go straight and that'll provide uh, one filter. Or you can set up something monthly. I know that would be a huge blessing too. Um, we're just going to receive our offering right now. If you guys could bow your heads. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to give our tithes and offerings. And God, I just want to say thank you, God, for every uh, faithful giver and family who is giving uh, each and every week. God, we bless them. Lord, your word is so clear about the blessings. I just heard another one last week at Standing at the Door uh, about you blessing people the minute they started uh, out in this step of faith. Lord, and I've heard it so many times, so I just thank you. I pray for even more outpouring of your blessing. God, that it would be like we can't even hold it in. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. I don't have the order up here, so am I missing anything or can I go for it? Oh, yes, I knew I was forgetting something. So this is a series we're starting next week. So point your attention to the screen. know there's a lot of lost people in our cities and our towns and God wants to reach them. Amen. And so this series is going to tie together really well uh, with that series. And we are in uh, part five of people of the spirit, why community matters. So turn in your Bibles. Let's see, what's our first scripture? Let's go to Acts two. If you're turning in your Bibles, I got a lot of scripture today. Uh, while you're turning there, I want to make one uh, more quick, uh, one, one quick announcement. We have uh, three people who have said yes to serving on the worship team. Uh, Tom reached out to us a few months ago and uh, has become a great guitar player and set up a meeting with Will. And uh, we have a couple more. Uh, Andrew's going to rock the bass. Where you at, Andrew? The bass, the bass. And uh, if anybody, though, we, we still need a guitar player, uh, a keyboard player, a couple vocalists, drummer. So we need uh, maybe three, four more positions. If you are a musician or a singer and you feel like, oh, man, is God speaking to me? Yes, he is. So please see Andrew after the service and or Will right here, actually, and he'll set up a time to meet with you. All right? All right. So listen, I want to recap the first few weeks. We can only find the perfect Father and Father God. We're talking about triune God. We can only find the perfect Savior in Jesus the Son. And we can only find what we long for when we listen to the Holy Spirit. And today, um, I want to just talk, I want to focus on that word people, that we must be a people of the Spirit, not a person of the Spirit. Can everybody say people? A people of the Spirit. Guys, after the conference, I had so many people talk to me about what God was doing in them. And you know what was a common thread in every single one? It was, oh, when someone came up, when he prayed for me, and when she came up and she encouraged me, it was in the context of people, the body of Christ. And a lot of times you encourage someone and it is a word from God for that person and you don't even know. 
And so we're talking about what it means to be a people of the Spirit, where the Spirit of God comes in and moves in our lives. And it is such a powerful thing. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I ask you to just move all my ideas or thoughts aside. God, that I would only say, I would only preach what you want me to say, that every heart would be open to receive. And Lord, if anyone is far from you today, that they would uh, come to you, Lord. They would surrender in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. So when Jesus comes on the earth, he brings this new covenant, right? And we see how patient he is, how powerful he is, that he is poised, that he's gentle, that he's kind, that he knows who he is, and that he gives us his spirit. We become image bearers. We become Jesus lookalikes all around the world. Now, how many realize that really annoys Satan? The more people that accept Jesus and start looking like Jesus, and I don't mean like, I'm going to get a great tan and speak Armenian. No. Um, <laughs> look like Jesus in your, your character, your disposition, the way you live, the way you think, the way you treat people, that you become the spirit of Jesus, Jesus lookalike everywhere. I want to tell you that this is the desire of Father God, that we would be a people of the spirit. Notice I didn't say a people of church goers. I love church. How many love church? I mean, we felt this morning already, I'm like, I've had such an encounter with God and like we're just now getting into the sermon. Pastor Andrew came up and just blessed me and spoke something so powerful to me. Right in line with, with something two other people have shared with me in the last two weeks and I am just like so encouraged. I'm just gonna tell you what I told you two weeks ago. I'm lit. I'm still lit. Okay, this pastor's on fire. I'll stop. All right. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to get a hate mail for that one. I just accidentally sang Alicia Keys. Edit that out, Ryan. All right. There we go. Edit. Cut. Paste. Cut. Blend. Okay. <laughs> Stick to my sermon. The Holy Spirit always points our attention to Jesus. I know I said this a few weeks ago, but I just want to start with this premise because this is so important. You know someone's filled with the Spirit when all they can talk about is Jesus, the goodness of Jesus, because that's, that's his role. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a very passionate person. He passionately describes Jesus to you. He invites the world to get saved. That's John 14. He convicts the world, the end of John 14. He teaches us how to abide, John 15. What it means to love Jesus all comes from what? The Holy Spirit. Everybody touch your ear for a minute. When you hear the, when you feel, man, is God speaking to me? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, the Holy Spirit, I want to say this, is a promised gift for followers of Jesus. This is not something you work for. This is a promised gift. And there's been many times over the years when, when someone says, well, I just, I just can't do it, you know, and they're praying with me at the altar. And I'm saying, well, you don't have to do anything, Stop thinking through this American transactional mindset. Because in America, we think very transactionally. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go uh, to Sherman Williams. I'm going to pay for paint. I'm going to pay. He's going to give me paint. And everything is transactional. But not, that's not how it is with the family of God. The family, the father just loves to give good gifts. Come on, he loves to give good gifts. And he sees you as an adopted son. He sees you for who you are as an adopted child, an adopted son. You know, a, a while back, it was kind of funny. Uh, Danielle said, I just can't believe uh, Lucas's allergy to eggs is so bad. And I said, well, I was allergic to eggs till I was like 10. So it makes sense. And she goes, yeah, just let that sink in. And she goes, Jordan, he's not your bio. I'm like, oh my gosh. I totally thought I completely forgot. You know how, that's, how God is with you? That's how he is with you. You say, oh, well, Jordan, my, my past is sketchy. Hey, everybody's going like this. It's like way over there to God. Psalm says, as far as the east is from the west, he sees you as his child. Come on. Man, that's not my sermon. I just want to preach on that, but that's okay. We'll keep rocking. God's motive is always love. And so he pours out his spirit so that you can express the love of God. He pours out his spirit so you can express the love of God. One of the things I say here all the time, and it's on purpose, is God's motive is always love. God's mo motive is always love. 
He inspires us to wonder at his creation. He inspires us to seek his face. He inspires us to open up the Bible. He hints at us and inspires us to come into the house of God and experience the presence of God together. Isn't there something beautiful about that like we experienced this morning? And by the way, that presence would have happened whether there's electricity here or not. You guys know that, right? We've had power outages before. It didn't, it's not like, well, God's like, well, I can't show up. I'm going to go to the church down the street, you know? That's not how it works. He is here in and amongst us all the time. In fact, the concept of this whole sermon, we're going to come back to this in a minute, but is, is how Jesus says the kingdom is among you. It's here. It's in the midst of you. Two or three are gathering you, I'm there. Man, this is a powerful thing if you get this. So miracles, miracles, everybody say miracles, are part of the life you were meant for. Can I say that again? Somebody say, Jordan, I think you said that at the conference. I know. I'm saying it again because I want it to get right here. Miracles are part of the life you were meant for. Okay? And when, when God's kingdom comes over top of this broken world and superimposes itself, that's when we experience a miracle. That's when we experience water into wine. That's when we see the jars of oil keep getting filled like we talked about two weeks ago. The life of miracles. I heard about miracles this week. Miracles, supernatural things, God things. Everybody say God things. Things you can't describe. Um, Things you can't contain. Come on. Man, I'm just like really excited right now. I just really sense God's presence. So his love for you is so amazing. His love for you is so great. Kelly, his love for you is beyond what you could ever understand. Ellen, his love for you is beyond what you could ever understand. When you're cooking at the house, he's smiling. He's like, that rosemary smells amazing. You say, does God say that? I believe he does. He loves the way you serve, the way you love, the way you give. He looks down from heaven and he loves those things about you. Look at Ephesians 5. And notice what, the, what Paul says. I know we marked Acts 2. Just keep that bookmark there. Flip also over to Ephesians 5. We're going to start at 15. Pay careful attention to how you walk. I really want you to not miss this. So turn to your neighbor, and it can't be your spouse. Look at him and say, be careful. Because there's certain places you shouldn't go. I really feel the Holy Spirit now. I hope. As a parent, there's certain places you shouldn't go. Take your kids. Be careful. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. Don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And look at this compare and contrast. Don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled with the Spirit. Oh, we're going to come back to this in a minute. Now, why would Paul say, well, you know, instead of getting drunk, be filled with the Spirit? (laughs) How many know when somebody is drunk, they do things they wouldn't do otherwise? Oh, come on, I'm preaching to somebody. When you're filled with the Spirit, you will do things you would not do otherwise. When you spend time with the Lord and you say, Lord, fill me with your Spirit, you will step out in courage and do things you wouldn't do otherwise. I sent an email this week that scared, it scares the poo out of me. It still scares me. I don't even know, why, I don't even know how this person is going to reply. They might reply, you're an idiot. And I'm, <laughs> I know, right? But they might reply, sounds good. That was just for me and Paul. I'm going to try this side. Paul's like, yeah, I sense that. I said, there are times when you're going to send an email asking for favor. Come on, asking for a miracle. And sometimes they're going to say, sounds good. Come on, how many want to walk in miracles? I know some of you are still on decaf. You're like, I'm fine with status quo. I'm fine. You know? 
And if you're a guest here today and you might think like, well, why are all these people so loud and why are they singing? Because we're excited about the miracles God's done. Imagine the Browns go to the Super Bowl and win. Come on, somebody. You would be, (laughs) he felt that, you would be excited for a long time. In fact, let me say this. When you went back into Cleveland, you would sense the spirit of that excitement days later. Come on. That's why we're excited when we come into the house of God because we know our victor has won it all. Right? I'm going to use Brown's illustrations more often. You guys receive that. It's like when the, spe- it's the Steelers just die in Jesus' name. I'm just kidding. I, meant, I, meant, I didn't mean like literally. I didn't mean literally. I didn't mean literally. On the one yard line, Jason. Okay? Just chill. Put the stone down, dude. I saw that. Okay. There's Paul, actually. See? The sin in your, the sin in your life. Look how the Lord brought that about the sin in your life. I'm getting you back for that pastor appreciation comment. It will cause people, even Paul, to lay down and surrender his sin to the Lord. (laughs) Oh, man. Listen, Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name. There's miracles in the gathering that you cannot experience alone. I want to say it again. There's miracles in the gathering that you cannot experience alone. And it's, it's, it's important that we remember, you know what? Oh, I haven't been to a small group. I haven't been to a life group in, in a year or two years or since COVID or what have you. Can I tell you something? It's important that you get into a life group. And you say, you know, I want to share life. I want to share what that scripture that Pastor Jordan said today or the book we're reading. I know there's, I think there's three of you of the life groups that are doing uh, Bait of Satan. One one group is doing the book we handed out a couple weeks ago on the triune God. When you share, this is what this verse meant to me. And somebody else goes, oh my gosh, this is what this verse meant to me. Now it's iron and sharpening iron. And the Holy Spirit, it's like he just steps into that conversation. Jesus says, there I am in the midst of you. That's why you suddenly can sense God. When you talk about Jesus together, you sense God. How many were here two weeks ago? We talked about the road to, the, to Emmaus, right? Suddenly, why? What did they say? Our hearts burn. Did not our hearts burn within us while he was talking? You see, the more he talked, the more the Holy Spirit said, this is the one. This is the one. You better pay attention. And then he breaks the bread. And I find it kind of funny that he disappears. <laughs> Gone. Like, just when I found out it was him, you know? I want you to turn to that Luke 24. I'm not going to read the whole story again because I know it was the premise of the sermon two weeks ago. I just want to give you this last verse. Verse 49. Jesus is saying all the law, the prophets, they all, everything, the poems that David wrote, he he literally says the Psalms, uh, the prophets, the law, they all point to him. And then he says, go. Look at this. Verse 49. I'm sending the promise of my Holy, of the promise of my father upon you. Stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Go together, pray, stay in the city and wait until you are clothed with power from on high. And I think there's a lot of Christians in the world and in America today that are not clothed with power on from on high because they're not gathered together waiting They're not seeking or desiring. They feel it's just me and Jesus. But there is no just me and Jesus. There is no just person of the Spirit. There's only people of the Spirit. God does not have many bodies. He has one body, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Come on. One body. And it's important that we say, God, I want what you have for me. One of the best prayers you can ask, church, one of the things I've said since I was a teenager is, God, I want what you have for me. Whatever you have for me. There was times when I was 12 years old, 13 years old, and I would come to the altar at Pastor's Kid Retreat. Yeah, they have those, PK retreats. It's a little strange, but there's a lot of awesome things. But I would come to the altar and I'd say, God, I want what you have for me. There's times I just worship, and then there's other times when God would say, okay, here it comes. And God would bless me. God would speak to me. And God would fill me with his spirit. You know, I looked up that word power. You know what that original word right there, power, means? It doesn't just mean power like we think of a Ford, like an F-150 truck. It has the power, you know, uh, to pull 
uh, a Chevy out of the, <laughs> that's for you, Randy, out of the ditch. No, it's not like that. It's supernatural power. That's what that word means. I know some of you didn't get the revelation. I'm going to try this side. So it's not just like power, right? Like, I, like this truck has more power than that car. Okay, I'm going to pull this Prius out, this Chevy out. Same thing. I'm just going to pull that out. It's not like that. It is supernatural. It's power from on high. It's where people go, whoa, 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 what happened? Right? It's where 300 men following a crazy guy named Gideon win. It's, it's, when, it's when David comes up to the camp and God says, wait, I don't want you to go this way. I want you to go round about. And I want you to wait till the sound in the balsam trees. And then when that happens, all the enemies are going to fight themselves. They're going to kill each other. You want to do a thing. That's called supernatural. It's like when God says, hey, I know you, you think you have to do this at work, but I actually want you to do this. And I want you to stay in overtime. I want you to stay an extra hour and work on this project. And you say, well, that project's not due till next one. No, I want you to do And there's godly, there's supernatural. There's something you're hearing from God that not everybody's hearing from God. Because why? You're a people of the spirit. Come on, there's supernatural. There's supernatural wisdom given to you. You're inspired. Amen. I right, turn to Acts 15. Is anybody getting this? Yeah. Come on. Acts 15. As we read this, as you're turning there, I want to set this up. The disciples had, um, you know, they're going about, they're, they're having their uh, dreams and visions and prophetic words one to another about where they're supposed to go and preach next. Even sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, hey, don't go to that city. And we talked a little bit about that at the conference, dreams and visions and how that works. And God gives us a picture in our mind of what's next. And if you missed that, you can go on YouTube or actually just go on rockofgrace.org. Michelle put a great banner right there and you can still listen and watch the uh, sermons and the services there. But in Acts 15, you actually see something to where uh, some men were causing a problem in the church and they were putting constrictions on the believers that weren't meant to be there. And look at this in verse 22. So they had to pick some new apostles and look what they did. It seemed good, verse 22 of, verse, of chapter 15. It seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas called Barsabbas and Silas, leading men among the brothers. When following letter, the brothers, both the apostles and elders to the brothers who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Sicilia, or, or Sicilia, however you say that. Greetings. Since we have heard that some persons have gone out and troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, although we gave them no instructions. Let me pause. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. That was, This isn't in my sermon. Be careful who you listen to. I'm going to say this again. Some people have gone out and troubled you with words, unsettling your mind. Although we gave them no instructions, be careful who you're listening to. You listen to the wrong people, you end up very confused and stressed out. And that's not how God wants you to live. Tap your neighbor, say, that was for you. <laughs> Maybe don't. Actually say, that was for me. Okay. But listen to this. Verse 25. This is the part that I want, I want to look at. That. It seemed good to us... Having come to one accord to choose men and send them to you over to our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas who themselves will tell you the same things by word of mouth. For here it is again, seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these requirements. And he goes on. It seemed good. Everybody say seemed good. This is one of the reasons why even when I'm un under the an, an unction, if you will, of the Holy Spirit, and I, I feel like I know God saying this, I always say, I feel like the Lord is saying because of this verse. That's why I don't say, thus saith the Lord. If, I, if I'm prophesying to someone, I say, it's, I feel like the Lord is saying to you. Because what, that, what we want to do is always have a humility and a courage that are combined. So we have the courage to say it. We have the humility to say, I think the Lord is saying this to you. And then we know, uh, again, we've talked about this in the conference a little bit, but weighing out when someone has encouraged us or given us a word that we test the word against the word of God and we pray about it. And especially if it's confirmed again, then we really wrestle with it. God, are you giving me an assignment? But I don't want you to miss this principle. It seemed good into us. I love the word us. Everybody say us. 
it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Oh, this is such a powerful, I wish everybody just, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to do something like, so cheese ball. I know my dad used to do this a lot. I used to kind of tease him for it, but I need everybody. I'm just, dad's going to be so proud of me today. I need everybody to lean in and come on, look at me like Clint Eastwood, you know, that was good. A little creepy, but that was good. I'm just kidding. That's twice. I told you I'm going to get you three times. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Who's the us? Come on. Who's the us in your life? Right? It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. There's something beautiful about community that if you're too easily offended, you will miss. One person at church, one person at life group says something you don't like. And you say, I am just out of here. I don't know if you put your hand on your fist and walk like that, but so many people do that. And then they miss out on the Holy Spirit speaking in the midst of us. You see, I've received a lot more encouragement in the us than I have a frustration or a disappointment. Come on, we're still human. There's going to be times when your brother or sister might say something a little odd or bad or mean. But the vast majority of the us that you're going to experience is a beautiful thing. And there's confirmations, there's direction. I, like I said, Andrew was just saying some things. Pastor Andrew was just saying some things to me that were re was really blessing me. I mean, confirming some things that God's been speaking to me in the last two weeks through multiple people, the us, the people of the Spirit. Everybody say people. Hmm. Skip down to, uh, let's skip past the rest of that passage. Let me just go to this. There is a beautiful revelation of the Spirit in the move of God that comes only in the context of community. If you don't believe me, look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, right? We'll go there in a minute. You can flip, flip the Bible there. I know I'm giving you a lot of scriptures today. Where in that passage, let's just go there now, Ruth, if that's okay. It's about three, three or four slides ahead. Where that, in that passage, Paul says, to one is given the gift of prophecy, to one is given the gift of discerning of tongues, to one is given tongues, to one is given faith for healing, right? And so one is given the gift of miracles and, and, and all of that is one body. And, and then there's honor for one another. And as you honor one another, you honor the body, which is the body of Jesus. So you honor Jesus by honoring the body. He's in and amongst us. And there's gifts that you have. There's gifts, Jimmy, that you have. There's gifts, Todd, that you have that I don't have. So I need you. I need you, Tom. I need you. Yes, even Paul. There's my third time. Got you. Even someone like Paul, God can use for his glory. Come on. The wretched, amazing grace was written because of Paul. No, I'm kidding. All right. I'm just kidding. That's enough. That was four. All right. So how does the gifts operate? How does, if, if you say, well, Pastor Jordan, you're talking about, you know, there's this gift of generosity, this gift of faith, there's this gift of miracles, there's this gift of prophecy. How do those things, that's the Holy Spirit activates these spiritual gifts that he put in there. He put them in there when you were born. Ephesians 2.10 says you were designed by God for specific good works. I personally believe that he gives you the gift to do the good work. That's why your assignments and your gift are always connected. But it takes community to realize what they are. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit births them and activates them. Guys, I was so blessed this last week when I heard about more and more people going to these foster families. Some of them are getting two meals a month. Some of them are getting their, their house cleaned a lot, right? And it's just like, they're being so blessed. They're like, Pastor Jordan, I don't even know what to do about it. 
I had a lady going through something difficult this last week, and I called her to see if she had meals. And she said, I have 10 meals. I need no more food. In the name of Jesus, stop bringing me food. Come on. How many knows, like, that's, that's the church I want to be a part of. When you're so blessed, you have to say, hey, stop the blessing. The fridge is full. You know? I love that. I love that about being in a church like this, that we are people of the Spirit. Again, turn to 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to read just a little bit of this, starting in verse 4. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. There's a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. A variety of service, but the same Lord. A variety of activities, but the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Ever say everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for common good. Common good. To one is given the spirit of utterance, utterance of wisdom, right? And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, like a word of knowledge, like you knew something you shouldn't know otherwise. To um, another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. I'll give you a perfect illustration of this. Kathy has an, and she's gone today, so I can pick on her. She has an amazing gift of discernment. Amazing gift of discernment. And I've relied on it many times this last week. And uh, it's amazing. And there's, there's times when it, w people in this church, you are given different gifts. And don't just think you have one gift. You have multiple gifts, right? So it's very likely two, three, four gifts are in you. And it's, it's amazing when you operate in it because it helps one another. All of these are empowered by the same spirit who apportions each one individually as he wills. As he wills. This is why you should never get, you know, envious of somebody else's gift. It, they, that's just according to, that's, a, that's God's choice. That's God's choice. Amen? Amen? You see, the spiritual, now, or the, I'm sorry, the spiritual gifts that Paul gives us and he lists here, it, it's not only so that your life can be meaningful and adventurous, while that is true. It's necessary for the reaching of the world. And this goes with what Will and Donna were sharing earlier. The first purpose, and I won't get into all three, but the first purpose of being a people of the Spirit is evangelism. Listen to what theologian Basil said in 350 AD. Through the rebirth from above, the Spirit enlightens all, speaks to prophets, gives wisdom to lawmakers, consecrates priests, empowers kings, perfects the just, exalts the prudent, is active in the gifts of healing, gives life to the dead, frees those in bondage, and turns foreigners into adopted sons. The same Holy Spirit. Ever say the same Holy Spirit? One of my favorite theologians, Augustine, I quote him a lot here. He wrote in 426 AD in a great book called The City of God. He talked a lot about blindness, about breast cancer being healed, gout, paralysis, hernia, demon, demonization, demonization, and even death. Now, what made this remarkable is this was right at uh, the turn of that century, right there. That was right when the idea of cessationism was becoming very strong, that the gifts have ceased, that the working of the Holy Spirit had ceased. When the apostles died, the power, the gifts died. That was the message that was going about. But Basil talked about it. He said, no, I've seen miracles. Augustine said, no, 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 I've seen miracles. Right? Amazing. Do you guys want to actually find something funny? I found this funny. Uh, I think it was Spurgeon or C.S. Lewis. I'll have to look it up. But I think it was Spurgeon. Uh, one of them didn't believe in prophecy. And then they kept prophesying in their sermons. <laughs> specific things over people. And it was various meetings in a row. People said, Oh, it just really blessed me when you prophesied. Nobody else knew that. I've never told anybody else. And he's like, no, I didn't prophesy. He said, yes, you did. You looked at me and you said this. And he goes, oh my gosh, I did. <laughs> and uh, his mind changed. Let's just say that. How many know God sometimes wants to correct your thinking? Men, I want to close with this. Paul says to zealously desire spiritual gifts. In Romans 12, having gifts according differently to the grace that he gives to use them in proportion to our faith. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, don't quench the Holy Spirit. That means don't stop the Holy Spirit. Gary, don't stop the Holy Spirit. There's gonna be times when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And just like, you, just like you're gonna, you open those valves and you let the water out, I believe there's gonna be times in your life, Pastor Gary, where you're gonna sense the Holy Spirit turn in the nozzle. And you're gonna say, okay, Lord, I trust you. 
and you're going to open that nozzle and the Holy Spirit is going to pour out. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't stop the Holy Spirit from doing what he wants to do in you. Stand up to your feet, if you will. I want to invite Will and the team up. I'm believing that this morning, God wants to do something special in your life, in your heart. I'm believing that even if it's just the next 10 minutes, that God can do something really powerful in your heart. Now, some of you might stay for hours. That's okay. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's been so many times where I just said, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I want what you have in my life. And I want to ask you this morning to make your heart open. Can you just open up your hands kind of as a gesture to say, my heart is open to what you want to do. And we're going to ask that the Spirit of God would break out into your heart. That the Spirit of God would fill you. That there would be a, a fresh infilling that would give you the inspiration, the power to move forward in your faith, to trust God, to believe God for the impossible. I want to pray over two groups of people. The first group and I'm not going to have you come forward. I feel in my spirit, you're just going to stay right where you are. If we could dim the lights just a little bit, maybe that scene two or three. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I really feel right now you're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And again, you say, well, what is that? Again, it's that second experience that we look at in Acts 4 and Acts 8 when it says again they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the apostle came to this new town and he said have you been filled with the Spirit baptized in the Spirit and they said no we've been baptized into the name of Jesus we've repented of our sins and he says well there's there's also the baptism of the Holy Spirit that you would be filled you don't need to be baptized for your salvation but you need to be baptized to be empowered to do what God's asked you to do and there is an infilling that's coming right now so I want you just to open up your hands. No one's going to come pray for you. I'm just going to pray for you right here. And if you're open to it, just say, God, would you fill me right now? Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your presence. Go ahead and say these words to him. Take this jar of clay and fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And one of the signs of being filled with the Holy Spirit is you might start speaking in another language. And we call that tongues. And we only call it tongues because that's what the Bible calls it. Is it mysterious? Yes. Is it gonna seem strange to you? Yes. But you're gonna find it to be one of the most beautiful things in your life. One of my favorite things to do is just speak in tongues to the Lord and let his spirit minister to my spirit because Romans says it like this, I pray to him in words I can't understand, but I have a direct connection to God when I pray in my heavenly language, when I pray in the spirit. And so right now, I want you to lift up your praise to God. Say, Jesus, you're worthy. Say, Jesus, you're worthy. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. His role is to tell you about how awesome Jesus is. So why don't you just join the Holy Spirit right now and say, Jesus, you're beautiful. Come on, Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you are the Lamb of God that was slain for my sins. Jesus, you are the Lion of the tribe of Judah that rose from the dead. Jesus, you gave me victory over sin and over bondage and over death. Jesus, you are beautiful. Jesus, you are wonderful. Jesus, I again surrender my life to you. You're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. I want you to raise your hand really high and wave your hand if you feel like God is filling you with his spirit right now. Yeah, about 10 or 20 of you. If you already sense it, Here's what I'm believing. You're going to sense it. You're going to feel it this morning. We don't always feel, by the way, I've talked about this a lot. We don't always have the emotion. We don't always feel what God is doing. But there are times when we do. 
there are times when the spirit comes in like a mighty rushing wind, just like the book of Acts, and we feel the breath of God fill us. If you want that, lift up your hands like an antenna and say, God, I receive what you have for me this morning. I receive what you have for me. God, I pray fresh breath of God, the fresh breath of God right now over your people. An outpouring of your spirit, Lord. An outpouring of your spirit, Lord. I thank you, God, for the same courage that filled John the Baptist. That came from your spirit. Jesus, you said that there is no one like him. And so, God, I pray that you would fill this generation, this house, with the John the Baptist anointing who came in the spirit of Elijah. And what did he do? He turned the hearts of the Father to the Son and the hearts of the Son to the Father. And I personally believe this end times revival, it might not look like seven services a week, but what it looks like is the church caring for the orphan because they're turning the hearts of the Father and the hearts of the Father to the Son because they're filled with the same Holy Spirit that filled John the Baptist, that spirit of Elijah you are so full of the love of God that it just overflows and it, it expresses itself in caring for the orphan and caring for those in need. So, Father, I pray for a filling of your spirit. A filling of your spirit. Can you keep your heads bowed for a minute? If there's anyone here that wants to talk more about accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, because maybe you've never accepted him, you've never become a Christian, you've never become a child of God. And you want to talk more about what it means that Jesus died on the cross for you and that you can be a part of a family, the family of God. And I want to say this, whoever is thinking about this, the word family is very important to you and it is a need in your life. Somebody is thinking about giving their heart to Jesus right now, and that person says, I lack a family. And I don't know if you're in the room or if you're online, but God is saying, I'm gonna give you a family. I'm giving you a father. I'm giving you brothers and sisters. Let me say it again, sisters in particular. There's a woman in here, you've asked for a sister. God says, I'm about to give you a lot of sisters. I wanna make sure I get this opportunity. And again, maybe this person's online, that has happened before, but maybe you're in this house. Can you wave your hand nice and high and wave it at me if you wanna accept Jesus as Lord and receive a family, the family of God? Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And for anyone who's also tuning in online, we're gonna pray this together. Can we all pray this? Dear God, thank you for becoming my father, for always being my father, and for letting me return to you, for having open arms and letting me run home. Forgive me of my sin. Make me a new creation. The old is gone. I'm born again. I want to be yours, Lord. Completely loved and completely known. Completely loved, although I'm completely known. Thank you. I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, come on. People gave their hearts to Jesus this morning. Jesus, we worship you. Let's end with this worship song. As he's singing, I want you to ask God to do something new in your life, to let him fill you with the spirit.
if you need to go, you can go. But I want to pray for some people up here at the front. I want to first have uh, the ushers and the catchers come up uh, and the prayer team. And I want the prayer team to do something a little different today. I want you to stand with the ushers and face this way. All right? And just form a line right here. If you're on our prayer team, one of our ushers, can you come up? Yeah. And face this way. And if you want touch from the Holy Spirit right now, I want you to come this way and line up. No one's going to push you down. We don't do anything weird here. No one's going to spit on you and push you down. We're going to ask God to touch you. And I'm just going to come by and I'm just going to touch you. I'm just believing God's going to fill you with the Spirit. It's no different whether I pray for you or make praise for you. I just want to be obedient to, to what I see in my spirit. Yeah, so if you want a prayer to be filled with the Spirit of God for the first time or the first time in a long time, come on right here and let me pray for you. And I just feel like God's going to touch you in a fresh way this morning. I know God did an amazing thing here a few weeks ago. I just feel like there's some of you that are going to be filled again. I want to trust what God put in someone's heart. This, this prayer over Kira is supposed to be out loud, uh, that we should all come in agreement with this. I just, I just see, Kira, you're a minister. When I see you, I just see like a minister. God, I thank you for this minister. Gospel of peace. You're gonna feet, your feet are going to take you many places. I may have even prayed this before over you before. Your feet are going to take you many places. You'll walk as an evangelist with a pastor's heart. I just hear pastor evangelists. That while you'll lead many to Christ, there's such a shepherdly uh, anointing on your life that you care deeply. You care deeply, deeply. Not that the evangelist doesn't care. Don't misunderstand me. But I just hear, I just hear evangelist, pastor. I pray for um, 
explored prophetic insight as to where she's supposed to go. I believe it was Agabus had prophesied a famine. In the book of Acts, God says he's going to give you strategies on what's coming. I just hear the Lord saying, um, I, I whisper things to you before, before time, before other people know. Uh, let's bring the music down just a little bit. I just, there's a... Um, there's a story in the Old Testament. Actually, there's a few of these, Kira, where the prophet, uh, I think it was Elijah, they would be consulted by kings, and they would say, well, how did you know? And they would decide God told him, even though he was miles away, and God is gonna tell you what other people want to know. God's gonna tell you what's gonna bring about victory. And the Lord also says, there's gonna be times when you say something they don't want to hear. And so one time I hear this story so loud in my spirit. The prophet, I believe uh, was consulted by Ahab. Ahab was married to Jezebel. Ahab said, tell me that I will win. Tell me that we will win when we go to battle. And the prophet said, you will win. And he said, you're lying to me because the king could tell he was not actually being honest. And then he, and then he was honest. And so God, I just thank you that you're gonna speak to her powerful truths, warnings. You're gonna take her many places. I hear the word Heidi Baker. I hear that name, Heidi Baker. She travels the world. She's misunderstood by many. She actually said in a blog post recently, she didn't want to come back to America because she was made fun of too much. But she sees miracles all over the world. She cares for thousands of orphans all over the world. And God has given her his heart. So Father, I thank you that you're giving Kira your heart for the lost. And it's gonna feel like a, a coat and it's not an accident that you're wearing this coat today. It's like a symbol. God, thank you for the mantle that's on her life. In fact, could I ask two ladies to just come lift up each arm? Because I want to pray that God gives you armor bearers because you, you, ha you have to have them in ministry. God, oh, stretch your hands towards Kara. God, we thank you that you are going to give her armor bearers. Even at a young age, Kira, God has already, I believe the Lord's saying that God has already said, hey, I've already surrounded you with strong people to lift up your arms. And there was a season when you thought you were alone in your intense faith. You actually maybe even wrote it down or you talked to the Lord about it and you said, why am I alone in my intense faith? And then you met some people like you and uh, God, I just thank you that you're going to bring like a Silas to her. Lord, a prophetic encourager. The same way Silas encouraged, Lord, and prophesied to the other leaders. I thank you, God, that you're going to surround her. You're going to raise her arms. You're going to raise her arms. And as she raises her arms, Lord, she's going to have so much victory. God, I just thank you for that. Thank you for the people that are going to surround her. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be so powerful. It's going to be so amazing. I don't know why I see, I see rows of wooden chairs. So Father, I thank you for the crowds. I thank you for the crowds that will come. And Kira, you're going to say, I don't even know why they came. And they, cause you're going to know it's not you. It's not your talent. It's not your gifting, but just like people came to hear Catherine Coleman and just like they came they come to hear Heidi Baker, they're going to come. People who are hungry and desperate in need of a miracle. And I just see you walking on the stage and just God's anointing your voice. And even as they're out there, hundreds of people are going to receive. They're going to receive power from God, love from God, healing from God. As you're under that anointing. Thank you, Lord. We serve such an awesome God. I keep wanting to pray for Silas, and it's like the third time it's crossed my mind. 
Can Trevor or Emily go grab Silas? Oh, he's in here? Get up here, buddy. This is my nephew. He's awesome sauce. Come on over here. Reach your hands towards Silas. Silas, I just want to tell you, when I said the name Silas in the, uh, earlier when I was reading, I saw your face and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, it's not coincidence, not just a thought that you saw his face. God is giving you a prophetic encourager anointing. Mm. A prophetic gifting, Silas. Silas, I want you to look at me for a minute. I didn't understand what was in me at all. So I went to Bible college and I had this lady named Jody and she would come up to me about every couple of weeks. And Emily, Jody would look at me in the eyes and say, you have a prophetic gift and you're supposed to go prophesy to that person. And I was already reading their mail in my mind, but I didn't know what it was about. And over and over, Jody kept coming to me and say, you wanna give a prophetic word to that person, don't you? And I'd say, yes. And she'd say, well, go do it. And I, I'm doing to you what Jody did to me. I want you to hear me. I'm doing to you what Jody did to me. She looked at me and she used to point like this. She's real sweet, but she would point and she would say, you have a prophetic anointing on your life and you feel it. And it's not just to bring joy to others through your humor. It's also to encourage people when they're down. You're gonna call people especially as you get older, you're gonna call people and say, I was praying for you today. And they're gonna, you're gonna hear exactly what I hear often. How did you know? How'd you know? So God, I just thank you. Lord, I thank you that I, I, I'm telling you, Silas, there's a very clear, there's a very clear, you're even gonna know people's names. It's only happened to me three times. I have a feeling it's gonna happen to you a lot. You're gonna know their name. You're gonna know all kinds of things about them. And the word of knowledge is gonna, is gonna come into your mind. And then you're gonna share the love of God, the love of God. They're gonna know how deeply they are loved by Father God. First, how known they are by God and then how loved they are by God. Thank you for this prophetic encourager. There's gonna be a minister that you work with um, for a specific amount of time. And I really want Emily or Shane to write this down or get this cord. There's, there's gonna be a minister that you work with and I see you beside the stage smiling ear to ear and they're on stage, but you're off stage, but you are so valued and loved by that pastor. And you are like lifeblood to him. And so Father, I just thank you for that season I thank you for that season. I just saw like five gifts lined up, like red and green and red and green and red and green. And the Lord's given you many gifts, Silas. Many gifts. I hear business tree, business and ministry, business tree. Can everybody say business tree? I know it's weird. Everybody say business tree. Let's say it one more time. Business tree. Because you're going to have business that does God's business. You're going to have a business that does the Lord's work. And it's going to be so fun. So fun. You're going to love it. You're gonna have so much fun. So Father, we thank you for this word of encouragement to Silas. God, we thank you that you don't look at our age. Lord, that your word says, Lord, not to, um, to despise, Lord, somebody in their youth, but to lift them up and to speak courage and to not let others put you down but to be an example. Silas, you're gonna be an example to many. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in his life. Thank you for all that you're gonna do, especially in that business tree. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, Aubrey, would you come up here? I have a, I think I have a word from the Lord for you. Isn't it, I feel like also we're supposed to be calling these things out in the kids. Like they're, the prophetic and the, and the spiritual gifts are being poured out on our children and our children's children. So Aubrey, when I kept looking at you, I, I just kept seeing this very interesting mind. And I, I kept asking the Lord, what, what about Aubrey's mind does she need to know? And I could be wrong, but I feel like he's saying that sometimes you think things that you think, does everybody else think this way? I don't know why I think things this way, but you have a very out of the box kind of mind because there's a discerning spirit in you that you see things unlike other people do. And you call things out that other people might not even see. And I feel like God's gonna empower you and give you a lot of power with your words. So be careful with your words because they have a lot of power. And he is giving you instruction and education and wisdom and discernment. I mean, like big time. It's gonna be a point where people who don't know how to fix the situation are gonna ask you. When they can't see the big picture, you can. You see everything from like an eagle's view, like way up here. And people are like caught in the moment and you're looking from the outside and saying, wait a minute, why don't they see that? I see that, doesn't everybody see that? Because he's given you a different type of perception, purposely so that you're a big picture person, you're a visionary, you're a dream caster. So I just wanna pray that God, we just ask you to shape Aubrey in the way you want her to be, that her mind belongs to you, her heart belongs to you. I see you blazing trails, Aubrey, you're a trailblazer. You're gonna go forward into places other people would never think to go. Whoa because you already see the outcome. You already see the outcome. You're not afraid. You just follow wherever God leads you because you know what the outcome is going to be. There's no doubt in you. You just walk those steps. I just see confident, confident walking in the favor of the Lord. No fear in you. So Lord, we just bless her. We thank you for her. We ask you to raise up every spiritual ooh, gift in her that you want to pour into her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to formally dismiss you, but it doesn't mean ministry has to stop. If you look over and you're like, you know, I want to go pray with them. Go pray with them on your way out, okay? God is a good God. Amen? Yeah. One last thing, super quick. 30 seconds. So just tonight, if anybody wants your kids prophesied over anything, God told me tonight at Immerse, 6.30 at Horizons, Pastor Jordan's going to be there. We need a big ministry team, so if you want to help with that, let me know. Very cool. Thanks for worshiping with us, guys.